advancement. And we are, we are at I would say the main, the main location where God was forming Israel. Because he had taken them out of Egypt and they crossed the Red Sea. They came through a number of challenges. And God always came through. And then God took them back to where he formed Moses. Which is in the Sinai Desert, the mountain of Sinai. Uh, it's also called the mountain of Horeb. And as soon as they arrived, here is Moses. Now, now here's what I want you to do, Bazalan, today. I want you to listen as in the sense of a Bible study. Ne? Because it's very fascinating. I want you to be able to, to put together the story and, and make it richer so that when you study it for yourself, it will have more meaning. But must, you must also remember, God can tell you things out of this message that I am not talking. Hmm? Yeah. So Jesus actually said to the disciples, be careful how you hear. When do you hear? When you understand. Somebody say, Lord, give me understanding. <clears throat> so I am, I, am, I, am, I am sharing the story from a macro perspective, from the wide perspective. But it helps us to be able to have a micro view so that we apply it to our personal lives. For that you can read First Corinthians chapter 10 where he says everything that happened to them was for an example to us. So as I speak, look at the timing. Look at the first thing God did. Listen to what God said. The words that God mentioned. Look at how they responded. You know, get the whole story. And your life will be enriched not only in the knowledge of scripture, but also in the application of scripture. Because when they reached that place, Moses went up the mountain. And God spoke to Moses. Now, one of the things we all need to observe about the interaction of Moses and God and Moses and the Israelites and God and the Israelites. Is that really everything God told Moses was never for Moses. Everything God told Moses, it was for the sake of the children of Israel. That's what we call a grace carrier. That's what we call a father. He always hears for the sons and takes the heart of the father to the sons. And then he tells them, you have seen what I have done in Egypt. And he said, I brought you to myself. And so he says, I need you. I want you to obey me. Because if you obey me, you will be a kingdom of priests. A holy nation. Listen, beloved. You know, we are, we are all sons of God. Ne? 
In fact, whether we obey him or not, that is just the truth because of the blood of Jesus. But you see, if, if you listen to what God says to them here, when he says, I brought you to myself, if you will obey me and keep my covenant, you shall be. Did you, see, did you hear that? If you obey me, you shall be. Obedience really positions you in a place of treasure before God. It causes you to become something to the Father that He, he uses for his pleasure. Amen. Amen. I did ask somebody to switch that on. Why is it not on now? I did feel it for at some point, and now I give feel. Okay, what I did it means. When we obey God, we become a treasure when it comes to kingdom purposes. Somebody say, God, give me grace to obey. And so, here they are with God, and God tells them, Okay, let me, let me start here. So this was, now remember, of all the places they have traveled, from Egypt to here, it took three months. But here, he kept them for a year. It should tell you that this must be the most important location of all the locations. If God would want to keep them for the longest time here, what God is going to do to them here is the most important thing. Right? I want you to see that. So, Moses, after going up to the mountain, he comes back down, he gives them the word, the, what, God, what the Lord said. And he says, God, God says he has brought you to himself. Now, I want you to see also that God is the most important location. Say that to your neighbor. God is the most important location. God is the first location, the first destination. Why did God say, I brought you to myself? It's because before they would become what he wants them to be, they must know him first. Amen. That's why you read in the Bible where the Bible tells us in Psalm 103.7 that God made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. When you get to know God, you get to know his ways, how he does things. We must understand this formula, Bazalwa. That in order to quote unquote walk with God, the first thing you must do is to know God. 
Amen. That's the formula. Know God first, and then you'll see the acts of God. By now, I hope you have already seen from the whole journey of the children of Israel that it looks like the works of God did not change them a lot. I hope you have seen that already. That what God did did not change them a lot. All the things he did in Egypt for the three months, God basically did them because of Moses. But here, he said, I want to keep them here so that I will form them into a people who will not be resisted wherever they go. It's the people who know they are God who, know, who do exploits. <laughs> Can you imagine, after seeing all the things that God did, I, I'll explain to you what happened here because it's important for you to see. After God did all those things, even the ones that I will explain, still, when Moses was on the mountain, they said, Ugokai Musheu. And they made a golden calf. One would ask himself, You will ask yourself, what's going on? What's up with these people? What's wrong with this people? It's because it has not yet entered here. Hey, somebody say, Lord, help me understand. Listen, you can see some of the greatest works of God performed by men and women of God that is not going to do as much to your face as if you would have the word of God in you and know God for yourself. In the book of Mark chapter 3, the strategy of Jesus was the same. Eri, Mark chapter 3 verse 14. The first thing, then he appointed 12 that they might be with him. And then he says, and that he might send them out to preach. And to have power over sickness and disease and to cast out demons. Do you see, Bazalan? Look at the order. He appointed 12 first to be with him. And then he would send them. I want you to do yourself a favor. Read in the book of Mark from chapter 3 and see that in chapter 3 he, he brings them to himself and read, look for the place where he starts sending them. You will see that he kept them to himself for a time before he sent them. Why did he keep them to himself so that he can form them? So that he can pour himself into them? So that he can disciple them? He gave them the first taste sent them. They came back saying, demons are obeying us. And then when he ascended, he said they must wait until they are endued with power from on high. It means if we are going to advance the kingdom, we must know the God whose kingdom we are advancing. So that you don't go there and misrepresent him. Are you hearing what I'm saying, Bazalan? The priests 
When they saw the, these disciples, the 12 ones, how bold they were, how they walked with God, it says in Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men. They marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. May people see that you have been with Jesus. Amen. Amen. That is the main thing. When people see you, they must say, oh, they must say, this one is living with Jesus. You know, yesterday after the meeting here, somebody came to me and said, we went to minister somewhere. And then, when it was time for what, I think there were uh, pastors who were sitting, who were supposed to sit with the, uh, the chaplain. You know, and then she says, and, and they called me, and they called me pastor. I said to her, when you impact people with the kingdom of God, they will call you a pastor. Amen. Even if they know you are not ordained, but the fact that you show that you were with Jesus, they will title you a pastor. By the way, all of you, you are pastors. Look at your neighbor and say you are a pastor. Ask us about Moza. Do it on my authority. <laughs> my authority, me, my authority. Yeah. Tell them you are a pastor. You know why I say you are a pastor? Because pastors are shepherds. Pastors are fathers. Where God has planted you. Your workplace. Where you are employed. In your business. Those people will never know God without you. And if they know God through you. What does that make you? Bam. Tell them again you are a pastor. Somebody read what we have written there loudly. What are you doing? What? Uh -huh. That is it. Amen. That is it. That's what we are doing here. That's why we are here. They realized that they were with Jesus. Listen to me. The depth to which you know God becomes expressed by how much you are willing to sacrifice for him. When you are not afraid, when you are bold with the truth of Christ, it's based on how much you know him. You can't represent a God you don't know. You can't sacrifice for a God you don't know. You cannot speak for a God you don't know. Somebody say, I hear you now. You have to come to him first. It speaks to your prayer life. It speaks to your devotional life. It speaks to how much time you spend with God as an individual. You, you have to know, if I spend time with God, I will be able to represent him more accurately. 
Amen. Amen. So, let's go back to the children of Israel. What did God do at Sinai? In Sinai, he gave them the law and the commandments. He gave them the law and the commandments. Listen, you need more, please believe me when I say this. You need the word of God more than the laying on of hands. Amen. I can lay hands on you now, you can fall. And we will lay hands on people. Yes, we will lay hands on people. We will pray for him to be healed and so on. And it's happening in, in other ministries. I mean departments here. But I want to say, my main job is not to lay hands on people. Is to speak. So that the voice of God comes out of this voice. So that you can be empowered to be able to stand against the spirit of our age. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that we can counteract the influences of modern times. So that you don't tolerate what God does not tolerate. You don't embrace what God does not embrace. You don't praise what God does not praise. And you don't say what God does not say. And you don't support what God does not support. Because you know him. He is your first destination. He is the lover of your soul. He is the one you are willing to sacrifice for. Somebody say, Lord, help me. The word of God is the primary tool of encountering God. Listen to what Paul says when he parts with the church. Acts chapter 20, verse 29. He says, in 29, he says, For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. But in verse 32, this is what he says. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Do you know what it means to commend? To commend is the same as you as having a precious, a valuable, uh, 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 what is this? Something valuable. Ne? And you give it to an organization that is able to keep it safe. In other words, you deposit it for safekeeping. So Paul says, I know there are going to be people who want to destroy you when I go. But I am depositing you to the word of God. Because I know the word of God will keep you safe. Even when I am absent. And this is what I'm saying to you. Tomorrow when you go to work, I deposit you to the word of God. God, because I know it can keep you safe even where I am not there. He says, I give you, I deposit you to God and his word. 
Tell your neighbor we need God and his word. When you have the word of God, you have the key to everything. Did you hear what I said? When you have the word of God, you have the key to everything. If you don't know how to forgive, Mamrut, the word of God will guide you how to forgive. If you don't know how to be healed, the word of God will give you the key how to be healed. If you don't know how to be protected or how to feel protected, the word of God will give you the key that will assure you you are protected. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. When the enemy comes and tries to talk to you and scare you, you will say, I know that I know that I know. I am under the shadow of the Most High. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. That, that Bazalwan, is what we deposit you to. Can you see that it's better than me laying hands on you? If you want the key to prosperity, financial breakthrough, the key, the key is the word. If you want to have a successful ministry, the key, the key is the way. If you want to know how to hate your enemies, <laughs> Sometimes your mind goes ahead of you. <laughs> I know your enemies are those who hate you. If you want the key of how to love those who hate you, the key is the way. If you want to know how to grow anything spiritually, the key is the way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The word of God, when you have it, you have a key to every area of your life. And so you should therefore realize that the issue is not only is not only that you should ask for prayer. It's correct to ask for prayer. But the key is for you to know what the word of God says. That's the key. And when you have the word, you know that you have the full protection. Hallelujah. Amen. Back to the mountain. Now, watch what happened. Now, I, I need to tell you this. This is what happened when they came to the mountain. After Moses came back, you see, agree, they arrived. He went up and God told him, Tell them, I brought them to myself, so I want them to obey me. So Moses went back and he told them. And God said to, Mo to, to them, I mean, God said to Moses, I am going to manifest myself to you, not to them, to you in such a way that they will believe you always. Tell them to sanctify themselves. Three days, they must wash their clothes and they must uh, 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 separate themselves. And they did that. On the third day, on the third day, in the morning, when the day starts, then there is a sound of a, of a trumpet 
It starts sounding. And as it sounds, then there's a fire that comes on the mountain. And that fire hits the mountain. And there is a smoke, dark smoke, that goes up from the mountain. And there's a huge cloud, dark cloud, that is around the mountain. The trumpet is becoming louder and louder. In fact, this is what God said before the three days. He says, cordon of the mountain. Nothing must touch this mountain for the next three days. If any human being any animal crosses the boundary, no one must even touch it. It must be killed. Shoot it with an arrow. Leave it to die there. You don't touch it. So the mountain became holy ground for three days. Now, the things that I've explained to you, they are happening on the mountain. And then there is an earthquake. Now, I want you to imagine with me that these things are happening at one time, but the trumpet is getting louder and louder. Now, you know what happens between God and Moses? Moses speaks to God and God answers him and the people hear how he answers. But the answer is so scary because there is lightning, there is fire, there is all these things happening. I and they said, Moses, Anything he tells you, we will believe it. Not this. Not this. Let me quickly read to you Isaiah uh, Exodus chapter 20. He says, Now all the people witnessed the thundering. The lightning, that's 18, verse 18, 20, verse 18. The flashes, the sound of the trumpet, the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. Then they said to Moses, You speak with us, and we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. Verse 20, Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, and that his fear may be before you, so that you may not seen. So the people stood afar off, but Moses drew near the thick darkness where God was. Now I want you to hear me as I close this one. This is how God manifested in the mountain of Sinai. But when he writes in the book of Hebrews, verse 18. If I'm not mistaken, you are the one who read that scripture a few weeks ago. It says in Math, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 18. For you have not come to the mountain that it may be touched and that burneth with fire and to blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of the trumpet and the voice of words so that those who heard it begged that, that the word should, should not be spoken to them anymore Verse 20, 
For they could not endure what was commanded. And if so much as a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. Verse 21. So terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. Somebody say, but. It says in 22. But you have come to Mount Zion. And to the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem. An innumerable company of angels. Verse 23. And to the general assembly. And the church of the firstborn. Who are registered in heaven. To God the judge of all. To the spirit of just men made perfect. To Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Hallelujah. Amen. When God wanted to form them, to give them the commandment, to give them the, 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 uh, uh, the law, and to build a tabernacle, all that information came there. But you see, God said they must build a tabernacle because he wanted to dwell among them. But in this day and age, you don't need to go to a tabernacle because you are the tabernacle. You are the dwelling place of God. Hear me, we say this many times, but believe me, wherever you are, God God is there. You are a carrier of God. You are a carrier of the presence of the Almighty. You don't need to shake for you to know God is in you. You don't need to feel fire. Hey, Bazalwan. I've seen people caught by fire, but after that, they unfire themselves. You know, some of these things, they make us realize that the experiences that God gives us, they are for a time, not for good. Not for good. Don't run after fire. Be the fire. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible talks of earthquakes. Be the earthquake when you come in, even if it's not visible to people, but in the spirit. How then? Amen. Let things shake because you are coming with God in you. You know, I, 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 this story, I think about it a lot. This whole trip of the Israelites. And I think about how God said to Moses. Moses. The people want water. Go to the rock. And by the way, that rock. It was not an ordinary rock. It was a rock called the flint. You know what is a flint? It was a rock that they used to make arrowheads. It was a rock that they used to start fire. It was a rock that they used to make axes. So it was a, an extremely hard rock. 
And God chose that rock. And so go to the hardest rock in the whole plain. I will bring water out of it. Which means that God will bring water out of the hardest situation you are facing. He will make life come out of it. But, but hear this. Hear this, Bazalwan. Ori Mudimu. He says, Moses, go to the rock, and I, hmm? I, somebody say I, that's God. God says, I will stand on the rock. You take the rod. You strike the rock. When you strike the rock, I will make water come out of the rock. Amen. When you enter your workplace, then I got the rod of God. You see, if Moses did not touch the rock, I mean, if Moses did not touch the rod, God would not have ascended the, the rock. I want to repeat myself. If Moses did not take the rod, God would not have ascended on the rock. But when Moses took the rock, uh, the rod, God went on top of the rock. And when Moses struck the rock, God made the rock bring water. Amen. When you enter your workplace, take the word. Come with the word. Come with a decree. When you enter and you know things are not okay here. Last night when Richaisa, it was not good. There's a meeting about to happen. There's a board meeting about to happen. And I know there's going to be fireworks before the meeting. Take the rod. Enter with the rod. And just say with your mouth. Because when you say, you strike the rock. When you speak, you strike the rock. And you know the principle, the order is that when I strike the rock, God will make water come out of the rock. Walk in there and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, peace be still. In the name of Jesus Christ, you spirit of strife, I take authority over you. I declare there will be no fighting. I declare there will be no arguing. I declare there will be no fighting. Peace be still. What are you doing when you speak? You strike the rock. When the meeting starts, everybody will be surprised. It's because the Son of God struck the rock. Bazalwan, aggressive kingdom advancement, it means this. Everywhere we go, our presence must reconfigure the environment. Everywhere we go, our presence must reconfigure the environment. Why? Because I know 
I'm not here by myself. I am representing the King of Kings. I've not come to a mountain that shakes. I am the one who shakes things. Because I have come to Mount Zion. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you hearing me, beloved? And so the issue here is not you. It's not you. Tell your neighbor, it's not about you. Uh -huh. It's not about your job. It's not about your promotion. It's about who you are representing. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In your workplace, wherever you go, be a grace carrier. Ah, I release that anointing upon you right now. Hallelujah. I release that ability to be a carrier of grace. The Bible tells us that uh, uh, grace and truth, the law came through Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. When Jesus had the 12 loaves, he broke them and gave to his disciples. He did not come directly. Jesus will not visit your workplace. He has got you. I therefore consecrate you as a grace carrier. Amen. You know, one time my wife said something about a, 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 a place somewhere where they were having launching a book or something like that. And she made, she made this statement. She says, this person said, you are a healer. We are healers. And in my spirit, there's a word that came. This is a series. Bazalwan, we are healers. Wherever we enter, there must be healing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Wherever we go, there must be healing. Wherever we go, people's lives must change. Wherever we go, please listen to me. Whether you speak or you don't speak, your presence must heal. Come on, give five people a high five and say you are a healer. You are a healer. You are a healer. Please, Bazalwan. Families must be healed because of you. Companies must be healed because of you. Government departments must be healed because of you. People's lives must be healed because of you. You are a carrier of his grace. You are a carrier of his healing. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Seas are shown up. Seas are